Welcome back from a three-day weekend. Today is Monday, April the 13th. And you know that the market giveth and the market taketh away. And we've been living or dying based on the McClellan Oscillator, which we saw as having gone to so overbought, not historically in this, this time frame here, but historically we've seen this before, but this is so overbought that we had to have a pullback and we had the pullback. So we expected this on Monday. It had nothing to do with the um, oil negotiations. It had everything to do with the market just needing a pullback and um, the money moving into the market gets taken out of the market by sellers and that's how they make a profit. But the volume was particularly low and the Dow, NASDAQ and the S&P dropped right from the open and then picked up a little bit towards midday and uh, in the case of the Nasdaq finished higher and a lot of that had to do with Apple. Apple had a great day today, so did Amazon um, in the tech and Google and Microsoft didn't have such a bad day either. But when we look at our market oscillator today, it's still in the overbought area and here's what we look at in our bigger pictures here. So we're at this point here, um, but it's not unlike we saw back in January of 2019, but this was after the market was already starting to go up. It came back from its very, very oversold, like we're seeing now, like we saw of recent, but it just shot up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days of moving up. Whereas this one we saw one, two, down, up, down, and then one, two, three, four, and then down. So we can see this kind of a pattern that will stay above the overbought line while the market continues to move up. Or we could see something like we saw back in 2007 where we have this pattern here. This was not the low. We shot up to over 200, not 300s and 400s, but we had this choppy pattern and then we shot up to 400. But what happened? We immediately came down and created the low. And I'm gonna tell you what that means when we look at the chart, but you already probably expect what I'm gonna say. Uh, here was the advancing volume and the declining volume. When we look at the stacked volume, we can see the volume was lower than any other day last week, lower than any other day of the two, three, four, five, lower than five weeks, lowest volume of five weeks. So the commitment to sell wasn't there, but there was enough selling going on that the market came down by a fairly good percentage. Uh, the uh, summation index is slowly making its way up, but Remember, we've seen this before. We saw one slowly making its way up only to come down and give us the definitive low of December 2018. So here we thought we had a low, but we didn't. We thought this might be the low, but it wasn't. And it came down to give us this low. So what does that mean when we look at our charts? I still think we're um, heading for the famous double bottom that would negate this Gartley and go down and start a whole new pattern um, from, from fresh. But Gartleys do not have to be completed once they're started. And um, we're looking at perhaps not a double bottom, but we're look, maybe looking for this retest right here of 2451, a retest of the previous bottom, not the uh, full bottom for this this correction. Uh, volatility index actually dropped a little bit today. That's a good sign, uh, meaning that this could be temporary. It's also coming into the cloud. The S&P, let's put up its cloud and see how we're doing there. Uh, let's get into it here. We've got a thin portion of the cloud to break through if we're going to hit the first target of the Gartley, and that's a good thing. But the longer that we take, if we take into April the 23rd in the last week of the month, if we don't do it this week, 
then there's going to be a lot more resistance to that attractive flat top. So it's either break through the thin and get pulled back to the flat top or have a tough time getting through this thick resistance to get drawn to the flat top of this inverted cloud. Um, our REIT stocks were down 5 and 6% today. Um, I don't think there's any particular reason. Amazon, wow, amazing day. They must have had some kind of news, uh, but they just continue to fire on all cylinders. You know, I'm getting anything that I order from Amazon, not in two days anymore, but three days, four days, sometimes five days, or sometimes they tell me five days and it shows up in three days. Um, so they're, it's just a reliable service. Caterpillar took a huge uh, drop today, and that was on a downgrade um, by one of the analysts. Take a look at it on tip ranks and see who it was and what the reasons were. But this is too much, and we closed on the 50% Fibonacci. Now remember we had rejection at the 200, and then came the downgrade, and now we've got support on the 50. I love this because I have the short August 120s, and I certainly didn't want to see the stock going to 130. Um, so this pullback to me was really nice, and most of my losses were absorbed by those short calls. Uh, but it also tracks with our stochastic mo momentum indicator, which is showing on the short term downside, but on the long term still moving towards the upside. So that means there'll be a wave down before there's a new wave up, but there will be a wave up. So that 50% Fibonacci was very important. Disney pulled back. Home Depot had a pullback. Um, you know, the longer people stay home, the less, the more time that they have to do projects, but there are just so many projects that they can do at home. So it's not something that's going to continue. You can paint your house once, you can't paint it twice. You can buy some appliances once, you can't do it twice. Will people do all of that? Well, not if they're not working. Coca-Cola down 15%, don't know why, but um, another sign that there's going to be a retest of perhaps this bottom because Coca-Cola has a Gartley pattern happening too. Gartley bat pattern happening, and it's perfect. Just perfect fit. Um, AT&T down 1.46% today. The banks probably had a bad day. Whirlpool down $4, and it's following a Fibonacci pattern. Uh, below the 38.2%, let's see if we have the Gartley here. No, well, yeah, we, yeah, we do. Oh my gosh, that's not a Gartley pattern. It's very attractive, not one that I would want to, to think about. Well, let's just take a look at it. Why did it do that? X, A, B, C, um, no. Let's try one that originates from, uh, we did from here. No, nope, nothing. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. Where are we going? We want to get the market, we want to get the economy reopened, but we don't want to reopen it too soon. I heard today that Canada may be closed until early July. Um, that, that means we can't be open on the 1st of May if our neighbor is going to stay closed until July. Uh, we are staying closed until the end of May, whether Trump wants it or not. And that's going to make it tough for the economy. But J.P. Morgan signaled that everybody's going to be made whole uh, for the losses from this high by the first quarter of next year. So all that means is chop, churn, but in the general direction of upside, longer term, not necessarily short term.